Pants for Men Under Garment Studios in Orange County, California. It's the Indispensable Thursday Show with Sable and Dave. Mediocrity never goes out of style. Oh, uh, hey, Boo Boo Ben. Is that a picnic basket I see before me? Yogi, I don't think Ranger Smith's gonna like this. <laughs> we'll keep working on that for next week, Dave. <laughs> Hey, Dave, I haven't told you about this yet, but this week we're going to try out something different in our sponsorship model. Okay. Because we're not going to wait for people to come banging on our doors to get our products out there. I was pretty happy when we when we uh, un, unsuckyourpresentation.com. Are we, are we going to start doing like sponsor rape? Well, what I'd like to do jump on them while they're heading into the office and I want to keep the bushes. I want to keep the silly popping a little bit. Maybe I should look away. I'm hearing the the pop. My peas are popping. Don't don't look away from the mic. Okay. I'm going to introduce the money, the real sponsors up front, and we'll keep all the fake ones and the and the comedy stuff. We'll keep those towards (laughs) the back. Well, we so, don't have any fake comedy sponsors. I just want to mention all of our listeners, all of our wonderful, smart, intelligent uh, listeners, they probably have computers like you. What about the rest? What about the rest of the listeners? Yeah, well, our listeners are the smart, intelligent, wonderful ones. Oh, I, I, I'm like the worst host. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's not that you're a bad host. It's that you look away from the microphone when you talk <laughs> sometimes. So I want you guys, if you don't back your computer up, off-site to a server somewhere else in the world, I want you to go to theindispensableshow.com slash backblaze. You do that too. Okay, right now? Right now, you do it. Theindispensableshow.com slash backblaze. I'm going there right now. And that's going to take, the take you to our affiliate link. Indispensableshow.com slash backblaze. That's right. I and can't believe I typed that all incorrectly with uh, the amount of alcohol I've drank before the show. <laughs> So if you have a Windows machine, if you have a Macintosh, $5 a month, it backs everything up on your computer that's important, not the operating system, because you can reinstall that. All your files, all your pictures, everything that matters in case the worst happens. The earthquake, California falls into the ocean, you swim out to Nevada, you buy a new laptop, you connect into backblaze.com, you get your stuff back. It's all there. I've actually been a Backblaze user for a few years now. and I didn't know that. I have, yes, I have been. I have no idea if it works or not because I've never had to use it. But I don't worry about backing things up well, because it's working. It says it's working, and I believe them. I tell you for a fact it works, and you, I have, I have, have to... clients that use it. Mm-hmm. I test mine periodically, of course. I've got the full security. Anyway, we, the whole show could be Backblaze. I just want to say there's lots of solutions out there. Just use Backblaze. Mm-hmm. It. It's great. Is this a tie into your uh, story about the beach? Sounds like a sunburn issue. Oh, a sunburn. Blaze. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you about my, <laughs> my personal you thought of this? back blaze. Uh, you know, subconsciously, I probably did. Mm-hmm. Well, I had I had a couple of uh, um, quick things I wanted to pop later on. Some really interesting articles that caught my eye. That caught my eye. Mm-hmm. But I promised to tell the listeners last week that I would tell you about the time I was pulled over on my Harley. Oh. And I yeah. didn't want to forget about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, we had determined that you did not give him oral pleasure. Uh, that's correct. Okay. I did not. So in 2001, I went down to the Harley dealer on my... You were uh, old enough to drive in 2001? You're yeah. old. On my Ninja 500, no, it was not a Ninja, it was a Shadow, Honda Shadow 500. Mm-hmm. Lori had a Ninja 500 that I was a little jealous of, but... A little powerful, mm-hmm. and I decided to buy a, a Harley Sportster, brand new off the lot, had three miles on it. Wow! Which I then upgraded to be a twelve hundred, and I drove it all around California, Oregon, Washington, uh, Nevada, uh, New Mexico. I think the almost the entire. If you West- don't think of all the states you drove through, the listeners can be very angry. So no, no, not take drove through. Extensively drove okay. on the highways. I put a lot of a lot of road on that bike, uh-huh. and then I got out of the army, packed up my trombone on the back of my Harley, and drove to California, which was in and of itself packed pretty up f- my trombone. Sounds like like uh, you know sort of like Carol Burnett at the end of the show. She's like, I'm gonna sweep up my spotlight and head out. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna pack up my trombone and just get out of here. I actually shipped the guitars with the moving company but packed the trombone on the Harley, mm-hmm. which was like, what? What just happened? So 
I'm in California, and I'm I hop on the 60 freeway, the 60 east, to go visit a, a buddy who I hadn't seen in five or six years. And I'm cruising along with traffic, 67, 68 miles an hour. Everybody knows you're from the West Coast, by the way, because you said the 60. Yeah. If you said, I got on 60, everyone would know you were from the East Coast because mm-hmm. they always refer to the numbers without saying the word the. Like we say, the 405 freeway. Mm-hmm. They would say, get on 405. It's a weird regional thing, isn't it? Sorry, go ahead. I'm, I know I'm going to totally derail your stuff. That's right. So I'm literally with the flow of traffic on my souped-up Sportster that I have mm-hmm. driven the heck out of for years by this point. And I see a cop like race up behind me and pull me over mm-hmm. on his motorcycle. Mm-hmm. All right. Motorcycle cops harassing motorcycle drivers. All right. I pull over. All right. I know the whole deal with officers. Even if I feel like I'm being punked, I pull out my ID. I pull the... I'm, you know, I put a smile on your face I say, and admit to what you did wrong, Hello, even officer, if you didn't. Do you, do you know what you were doing? I said, no, I, I don't know, officer. Uh, I thought I was riding with the flow of traffic within the speed limit safely. Oh, you got and, a beat down right there, didn't you? The baton came out, right? And then he said to me, you know, my wife drives a Sportster. I got a Road King at home <laughs> and a Dyna. And I knew at that moment, when he said his wife drove a Sportster, uh-huh. I was out. I was You're done. Right. He gave you oral pleasure. Yeah? No, no. That he was, just let you go. That meant no matter what, I was getting a ticket. You were getting a ticket. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was probably going to go to jail, but I was so polite by handing my, mm-hmm. my items, asking him about his bikes. I told him that, you know, well, someday, sir, I'd like to step up to a big road king like that, too. <laughs> so I think I managed to talk myself out of jail, but you into were the still ticket. nice, even though. See, it's a message for for the black dudes, the young black dudes out don't there. Don't make this. About. Don't no, turn this to black it's, dudes. It's just be be super nice, even though you're angry. Like I said, don't like the fuse. No, I was <laughs> really angry afterwards because it was clearly he pulled me over just to mess with me That's, uh, on yeah. my motorcycle because his wife drove a Harley, and then after about two or three weeks, I cooled off. And I realized I was not going to go to court and fight it. It mm-hmm. was only a $65 ticket. Mm, yeah. I sent in the check. And to this day, I harbor resentment against the CHP bike officer. <laughs> what was his name? Do you remember? I don't. I probably have the ticket, though. <laughs> I can pull it out. You have it laminated in your wallet? Is that, the, <laughs> is that the one? I know you have one in your wallet laminated. Is that the one? So that, that was my uh, not very exciting being pulled over on the Harley. But it, I think it related to what we were talking about last week. Can I close this uh, window of uh, back blaze? Oh, yeah. I'm you already close used that. I don't need that. Let me tell you one more pulled over story. Oh. So before I had a Harley, I had a souped up 88 Mustang with a big old spoiler and shiny rims and a five liter Mustang, the boxy five liter, ones. the big boxy. Cool. Uh huh. Those we are cool in a we weird used to way. Race those around. Well, they were very cool in the yeah, 90s. They were. They're still kind of cool a little bit. Yeah. And I mean, they look like a gremlin, though. The AMC Gremlin, just a little bit, you know. Well, don't tell that to uh, to, to young military me. So, <laughs> I'm sort of done with uh, with what I was in Virginia Beach to do. I got like another week left before I ship out and move to Arizona, and I'm taking a day at the beach to go rollerblading. There's not a very big boardwalk. You can kind of rollerblade in about ten well, minutes. I'm, I'm trying to get a mental picture here. Do you have dolphin shorts on and leg warmers? No. No, but there was a a friend of mine, a flute player friend. She was in the passenger seat. Flute player. I was driving the car, and a Camaro zooms by this 45-mile-an-hour road on the right-hand lane at about 100. Vroom! And she looks at me. And she wasn't, I wasn't dating her. She was just like a nicer lady that I hung out with. She said, you're not going to let them get away with that, are you? <laughs> so... Nope, I'm not going to let him get away with that. So I take off. I pass the Camaro. I'm feeling good about myself because I got a fast car. And there are lights everywhere all of a sudden. And I slow down and I pull into the nearest parking lot as soon as I see the lights and sirens and turn the car off and put my hands on the top of the wheel. (laughs) And I look out. With a big smile on your face. And there are... Four police cars oh. blocking me in so I can't move out of the car. Mm-hmm. And they have their hands on the guns as they come up to the window. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I was doing 92 and a 45. Oh. oh, that's pretty close to doubling the speed limit. Actually, it's over it's doubling. It's over the speed doubling. Limit. See, I'm not too good at the math. Now, what subsequently <laughs> happened, I'll make the story shorter than it actually was. First of all, they let me, Thank you. They let me go. They let me drive back, which was unusual because... 
I know they can impound your car if you're doubling the speed limit. They could always put heard me that directly so, yeah. to jail, yeah, and they let like me know that. Myths. But I was extremely polite, and then I completely panicked, and the people in the unit freaked out, and I had to go to court. So I'm calling my friend, who's a lawyer. Like I'm going to jail. This is it. Is this the, the lawyer that listens to the show? Yes. This oh, is right our on. this is our listener. The criminal slash lawyer. <laughs> yeah, the criminal <laughs> lawyer. And he says, just calm down, admit to everything you did, promise you'll never do that again, Good advice. and put on your dress uniform with all your medals. Oh, ooh, yeah. So I put on my, they're called Class Bs at the time. I don't know what they are anymore, but it's where you had to wear like the ugly green slacks with the sort of weird greenish blue shirt. But I had yeah. a lot of medals because I was in the band. And we <laughs> get a lot of band medals. We get a lot of medals in the band. So I had a lot of medals on. I hit a high C during a live show one time. No, not like that. <laughs> I went to Bosnia and yeah, yeah. carried weapons and stuff. Anyway, so I put all my medals on. I went to court, and of course the police officer was there that pulled me over. And I said, yes, I was speeding. It was absolutely wrong, and I know it. And I swear I'll never do it again. <laughs> and it looked like he was going to give me a hard time. And I said, also, Your Honor, I'm due to leave... Virginia Beach next week if you allow me to and I promise I won't come back if that's important and he charged me a $400 <laughs> ticket and sent me home all right very good <laughs> that's that's when I got in the most trouble because <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the platoon sergeant either the squad leader or the pl- platoon sergeant one of the guys who was like a supervisor of me mm-hmm. his wife got pulled over for doing about 85 to 90 miles an hour on the same street. But she lost her license for a year. Oh. He was mad that I didn't lose my license. She probably popped off. Anyway, we're uh, doing traffic (laughs) stories now. Why don't you call in 657-206-0777. Sable and Dave, the Indispensable Thursday show. (laughs) Taking your traffic stories now. We'll read them on the air. Email them to us. No, no actually, I'm going to tell one now that you got me You got me going. Okay. This is very brief. I just want to point out, oh. in, in both cases, it could have been much worse for me. Shot, dead, pulled out of the car, arrested, car impounded. Yeah. I'm just saying, show my ID, apologize, yes. be polite. Could have been worse. I have gotten out of over, uh, probably 60% of the time I am let go because I'm very nice and I say, oh, crap, what was I? Was I speeding? I just offer up stuff. What was I doing? I'm, oh, sorry. I was. Did I go a little bit into the red there? Eh, sorry, judgment call. Sorry about that. I always I say I'm sorry. Sixty percent of the time, eh, okay. I'm just nice. I'm nice to the guy. Okay. Um, one time, you can tell me why you think I got let go this time. I was with a friend. This is when I worked at the movie theater back in the eight, late '80s. Driving down, uh, I was. He, we were on, both on bikes. I was on like a Yamaha 550, I think it was. No helmet. This is before helmet laws, though. Mm-hmm. At night, sunglasses, no helmet. I was doing like 70 and a 35. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got pulled over, and the officer was named Officer David Smith. <laughs> he let us go. I don't know why. I was nice again. I was nice. I'm like, I'm like yeah, that's pretty stupid. Sorry about that. He let it go. He should. That was, mm-hmm. you know, I did not. I was nice. That's the whole thing. If you're nice and you admit what you did, say sorry. You had to pull me over. You don't think Try that it. you don't think his name being the same as yours had anything that to too, do? That too. But it? if I if I was a douche, I would have got a ticket. I, you know, but right. maybe he thought it was amusing that we had the same name. I don't know. So I would have thought him. it was amusing. So you ready for some news nuggets? <laughs> yeah. All right. You better talk about the self driving Apple car. Too. Oh, we'll get gotta, to that at the end of these okay. news nuggets for the week. A California native tribe is filing a class action suit against the World Wide Web Consortium. They state that the use of HTTP is a racial slur and biases people against their housing. Whoa. (laughs) I'm not surprised. (laughs) A recent PU survey indicated that the average American can't tell one white male candidate from another. (laughs) Mm -hmm. In response to public demands, Target has shuffled all the toys that used to be in the boys and girls sections and arranged them by price. You want a $10 toy? Go to the $25 aisle and check the bottom shelf. You want a $20 toy? Go to the $25 aisle and check the second to the bottom shelf on the left. Customers are very confused and have started an online petition to return the blue and pink sections back to their normal place. If you want a nice toy, go to a different store. 
Well, they've also started a Kickstopper, which is currently oh good Kickstopper funded. comes up. Oh good, yay Kickstopper! <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> now tell me about the Apple Car. <laughs> I was recently reading a little bit about this. You know, Apple apparently they are working on a self-driving Apple Car. Well, I, you know, yeah, Apple. I don't know what they're going to call it. They haven't said, but there were some conceptual drawings, and they look really they look bitching. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Apple. They're used to. Um, they're known for having the sexy products, the right. sexy uh, looking. I mean, your iPhone gives me a little bit of a half wood just looking at it. We've got know. an iPhone. Well, I have, a, I have an iPhone 5C, but your iPhone 6 is like something that's otherworldly. And the iPad and the, mm-hmm. and the iMacs, they just look prettier than yeah, other yeah, yeah. things. Oh, by the way, yeah, like if Apple ever gets into making the sex robots, you know they're going to make the best looking sex robots. Everyone's going right. to want the Apple sex robots. But uh, can, can you we imagine? just adjust your mic real quick? Yeah. Well, we're uh, going to do this live and on the show. Oh, Sable's reaching over, and he's – what are you doing? Not that okay, much. that looks better. Yeah, I, I'm popping a lot in there. Right? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. What's that? Oh, that's per- – I like this better. See, I've been <laughs> adjusting my mic the whole time when you should have been doing it the whole time. Um, I don't like to ever touch another man's mic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what the hell was I talking about? Apple, I, the cars. Yeah. They I are, think you were going to talk about kerning in fonts. They are, <laughs> they are. Yeah, terminal, uh, terminal windows, uh, terminal command windows, ligature, uh, uh, serifs. No, they're so yeah. <laughs> Apple ro- sex robots. <laughs> they're going to make the hottest ones. Yeah, but I was thinking this. This has got to be a fanboy's dream because you know the the uh, like I said, Apple products, sensual, sexy mm-hmm. looking. The Apple Car. Can you imagine? As you, as a fanboy, can you imagine finally fulfilling your dream of being inside an Apple product? I can huh? tell you it already exists. It's called the Tesla Model S, <laughs> yeah, and it's it great. I got an email from Elon Musk himself, of course, oh. directly. It said, Dear Sable, <laughs> we're opening a Tesla store in your town oh. very soon. And if you respond to this special email, you can have a test drive and your own time slot. I missed it. It was last weekend, but I was busy at the beach. Um, I mean, come they on. They should do a, like a um, like a Willy Wonka style thing. Like they'll give you a tour of the Tesla. If you uh, they should sell you know candy bars or something, and if you get the golden ticket, you get to take a tour of the Tesla. I, I think it was Elon a golden. Musk. Yeah, I think It'll it was a golden ticket that I got. You know, <laughs> be the songs, you know. I mean, how many what people this? could they have sent that to? They can't have that many appointments over a four day period uh, in one location. Yeah. I probably got yeah, one of like a hundred emails. How did you make the list? That's right. Did you think he actually typed it out himself and sent it to you? <laughs> I think he specifically went to the show, looked it up, figured out what the email was directly so he could email me without having to get it copied to you also. Because, you know, mm-hmm. if you email Sable at the indispensable show.com yeah. or Dave at the indispensable show.com, we both get it. Yes. So right. well, I'm just good. saying. So I'm looking forward to this Apple self-driving car. If uh, it's, it's it's years away, I'm mm-hmm. sure, but they always make the coolest stuff. It'll probably be even cooler than Tesla, but really the sex robot, the Apple sex robots, one I'm really looking for. Did we talk about the sex with robots before? We did. We did a little bit. I saw the movie oh, yeah. Ex yeah, Machina, Ex Machina, right? Which got yeah. us talking about the the origin of that saying, and yeah. Mm-hmm. And now our listeners are all film critics, so we were talking about a real back blaze. And this weekend was well. It's been pretty hot here in Southern California, and we were we had a pre-planned beach day on Sunday. And the last few times I've gone to the beach, I've thought, man, it would be nice. My kids are just old enough; we could start bodyboarding. Bodyboarding is one of those things that I really liked doing as a kid and never got around to doing as an adult. Yeah. So I was sort of looking for an excuse to have a couple body boards and go ride some waves. I'd done some body surfing since then, but never body boarding. And then I was at the Costco. I saw the good deal on the body gloves. I didn't buy them. I went to the beach. I went back to the Costco. I saw the boards. I didn't buy them. This time we're like, we're going to the beach. I'm going to go buy some. You walked out with the 800 pack of paper towels though, right? Did you of course. Oh, I always stop, stop them to the top. I always stop and pick up another 800 pack of paper and the towels. Pre-cooked bacon. Nobody. They have the best pre-cooked bacon there. Well, you don't do bacon here. But. No, no. Their turkey bacon is not that great at Costco. Mm. We bought some and we haven't been able to even give it away. So, oh, you gotta you gotta be sh- you gotta shop carefully at Costco. But the body boards are <laughs> a good deal. 
So I went in. What to go brand get are they? Their body glove. Okay. So I walked in right to where the body boards were, and they weren't there. So I turned <laughs> to the left to the place they were before, and they weren't there. Like, oh, crap, I missed them already. So I found they had been moved to the aisle where they're about to go away from the store. And they're right next to some nice surfboards, too. If I ever surf, it seemed like that's an inexpensive way to get going on it. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed a couple. We went down to the beach. And my eight-year-old, man, once he got over his initial fear, I couldn't get him out of the water. (laughs) He was in and riding waves, in and riding waves. I had to, like, pull him to the car. Like, get out. Get out of the ocean. We have to go home and eat dinner. (laughs) Uh, get out of the ocean. And later he was like, Daddy, I don't know why I'm so hungry. <laughs> get out of the ocean. The calls are coming from inside the ocean. <laughs> you get that one? You, get, you know what no, I'm talking about? No, no. <laughs> this is a famous movie, When a, when a Stranger Calls. You know, she's uh, being harassed by a caller. And, and you know about the midpoint, the cops call her. Get out of the house. The calls are coming from inside the house. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. that was a great one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Nice one. <laughs> hey, by the way, you know Jimmy Carter has cancer? Jimmy Carter? I thought he had liver it? pills. No, he's got liver cancer. But I was wondering, do you think that he hates cancer as much as he hates Israel? No. I don't think he does. I think He hates still, Israel more than anything. I think he still hates Israel more. If he, The doctors say he's channeling his hatred of Israel into the tumors, and mm-hmm. he's actually defeating cancer. So good for President Carter. Wow. Yeah. He's going to outlive. I don't know where that came from. He's going to outlive Billary. I mean, have you seen that guy lately? <laughs> Mm, yeah, yeah, that's been a little bit. I wonder rough. how many STDs Bill has. At his I, age, does it matter? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, does it really matter? Everything else hurts. What matters if it hurts yeah, the pee? Yeah, and the girls that he's having sex with probably don't. They're just like, I got herpes for Bill Clinton. This right? is my Clinton herpes. You know, they're like, Yeah, yo, Clinton herpes. You know, he probably every time he goes and uh, makes a new friend, just hands her a care package. Like, you know, there's some. There's some yeast cream in there. (laughs) There's a douche. There's like all kinds of whatever whatever you might need. There's some kind of jelly in there. Like, just just take it. You know, after having sex with me, you might experience some uh, itching sensation or maybe a cottage cheese-like discharge. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some products right now. Take care of that. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So have you been following the the latest drone story? No. No. Well, okay, there's so many. I just somebody took our drone delivery program. Uh huh. The soda drone. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. But they they used it to drop drugs. Oh. <laughs> so in <laughs> in an Ohio prison yard, a drone came in and dropped a load of heroin, marijuana, and uh, tobacco. A, load. <laughs> a payload. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the and of course the yard was full at the time of inmates. Mm-hmm. So. Suddenly there was a, they called it in a brawl. Oh, it okay. seemed like it was more riotous than anything. But then the Ohio authorities had, they had to come in with pepper spray. And then mm-hmm. they have no idea what happened to the drone or where it came from or how yeah, many other times, dropped. how many other times has the drone come in and dropped heroin, marijuana, and tobacco? Yeah. And what color is the drone? Because if I was going to have a drone, I would paint it like blue. Because, you know, they're coming out of the sky. I would paint mm-hmm. it, like, blue and white, like cloud. I put clouds on it and stuff instead of painting it black. Yeah, I don't know. I that, wonder. They didn't find the drone, so. Wasn't there was another prison riot somewhere I heard about, too. I don't know where it was, but it sounded like the entire yard erupted in just a horrible melee. And I remember thinking, because they said how many people were injured, like, one person was stabbed. And I was like, hmm. huh? It seems like a prison yard Riot would be like the worst place to be ever, but only like they only treated like four people for injuries, and like one guy got stabbed. Like, that doesn't sound like too bad of a prison brawl. Like, you know, it was weird. Hmm. I would have thought it'd be a lot worse. Anyway, it's just me. I tried it was to... a federal prison, it was one of those federal penitentiaries where they have all like Bernie Madoff was involved in the brawl. And he didn't, uh, wanna, I don't know, he didn't want to break a nail. Mm-hmm. I try not to think about prison too much. <laughs> it's a pretty awful subject here in the United States. Yeah, we had, did we talk about uh, yeah? What, what prison was it? I'm I got I'm gonna look this up because I was ta- I found this really interesting. Now that you bring up prisons, let's, are you let talking me, about Supermax? I, which one's the one in? Is it Louisiana? Um, oh, I thought you were talking about the Supermax in Colorado. Uh, what is the prison? I think it's in Louisiana. Is it great? Do some song and dance while I figure out. What's, anyway, <laughs> there was a like it is one of the 
uh, most well-known prisons. And I think they had, I heard about, Dennis Prager was talking about this. He went and visited uh, this place. They had the highest, at least, or maybe one of the highest murder rates inside their prison. God, which one is it? Dang it. Uh, uh, they, I mean, they had probably 50 or 60 murders going on a year inside the inside the prison, like mm-hmm. prisoner on prisoner. The warden is one of these kind of wacky evangelical Christians, but he instituted a no swearing policy. Oh, right? I heard about this. And what do you think? What do you think happened? Did murders go up, down, or what? Well, research shows that if you change the way you speak and act, you'll change the way you think. So if you want to be a positive, uplifting person, you literally change the words that come out of your mouth to be positive and uplifting. So given that, I would say that the uh, fighting and the murders decreased a lot. Double. They, they, they halved or they went to a quarter over a year. They went to zero. Oh, zero. Isn't that amazing? That's good. From no swearing. But yeah, you're right. It causes you to – like they were punishing guards and prisoners. Like mm-hmm. everybody was part of this. So it causes – you're right. causes you to check your emotions. Oops, I just knocked my mic over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it causes you to check your emotion a little Mediocrity bit. Mediocrity never goes out of style. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, you'd think every other prison who has that problem would go, oh, we're going to do that. Hell no, they're not going to – they probably don't even know about it. From one, You'd think you'd send a memo out, hey, FYI, we reduced – the amount of murders in our prison from this horrible astronomical now to zero with this super no cost mm-hmm. simple plan, but of course no one no one cares. This is going to be like ah, good for you. Well, you're not exactly dealing with a group of behavioral scientists. You're talking about people who are prison guards for a living. Now yeah, they may they- have been in the prison guard system and the prison guard union and been there the whole career. But that doesn't mean they have anything to do with research or science. Well, I'm almost going to think that maybe you and I should should take this under our wing. We should take – we'll go interview the guys over there. We'll just make a little video. We'll go around to all the prisons and go, why don't you do this right now? No, That's- seriously, why don't you do this? Are you going to do this? And if they say no, you say, why not? Mm-hmm. Why not? <laughs> so, why right? not? Do this. You know, um, it, I, not like I love prisoners, especially murderers. I don't care too much if certain prisoners get raped or but yeah we don't we can't condone this we mm-hmm. do not need rape going on in the prisons you go there to to do your time blah 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 whatever you should not get murdered in prison guards should not be getting killed in prison this this seemed like no brainer let's do it it's let's almost, work on this it's almost like the more we imprison people and the more restrictions we put on them the worse they get <laughs> now i don't want some of those people accessible to the public Child molesters, yeah. rapists. Like, I don't want them walking around. I don't want them coming by my house. You know, the people that are trying to rob you, first they come by, they knock on the door, they got a clipboard. Hey, <laughs> we're uh, we're going to clean the gutters for yeah, free in robbers. your house. Like, no, get out of here. Mm-hmm. I had a guy even one time, I, I was like, my hands are full. I'm just getting home from work. I don't want to talk right now. Thank you, but good luck. Well, come on, man. I'm not going to hurt you. I said, that's right. You're not going to hurt me. You're going to move along. <laughs> Like, why would that even come out of his mouth unless he was casing my house? Uh, yeah. Uh, right? Like, I, I don't understand people. Weird. I hate these people. Yeah, it sucks because when you have children, too, they'll just run and answer the door. Because mm-hmm. if you see out the corner, you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to go to the door. But my daughters will run up, Daddy, there's someone at the door. I'm like, Ixnay on the or day. Get down. Hide. I don't want to talk to this person. They just want to sell me. Daddy, why do they want to? Uh, it's ugly. So I'm trying to train them. Like when they hear a knock on the door, duck, mm-hmm. just duck, hit the floor. I will figure out if I want to answer the door. I don't understand why businesses still canvas. It must be effective because yeah. there was a time, let's say 20 years ago, when you went door to door so that you could talk to whoever was home and say, we're offering the service in your area. Here's some information. If you're interested, let me make an appointment with an expert who'll come in and talk to you. Mm-hmm. And they'd say yes or no, and then you'd move on. But now you just email them, right? Yeah. But you, if I need your service, I will look for you. Or you call them. Like, you send them an email. You call. You send a flyer. Why is anyone knocking on my door mm-hmm. except high school students? And they always want to sell me a Kit Kat for $3. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It was like the Kit Kat cost 50 cents at the store. Uh-huh. Maybe 75 cents now. I don't know how much I they cost. I just hate that. I just don't come to my door. Don't come to my door. Last time there was a very nice uh, two students, a guy and a girl. Oh, it's still recording. <laughs> A very, very nice couple of students. I said, hey, "Look, here's five dollars. Just go on your way." <laughs> yeah. So go buy yeah. some, go buy some uh, cigarettes. I don't think you buy <laughs> cigarettes for five dollars anymore. Oh, I thought they were like nine dollars, anyways. Some of them are. Well, given the time, <laughs> I actually yeah, had I a, just went, wow, the time just flew right. Well, I had a couple of. Well, I'm going to bring up a topic. Okay. And I'm going to just ditch the rest of the stuff. We'll bring it on home. Keep save that stuff for next week. So in our quest for creativity and productivity, you know, we, we all have the same amount of time in any given day. And how we manage that time is important. Those are wise words. Right? So, so something that we've always known and we never want to listen to, me included, I'm guilty of this, is that you need to have a certain amount of sleep to function optimally. Yeah. But most of us don't want to go to sleep because we have a lot of things to do. We don't want to give up watching one more show of The Wire or one more episode of The Good Wife or one more movie after we worked all day and all night. But then we wake up the next day sure. and we're exhausted. And, of course, there's always a, a do-gooder, somebody who's a motivational speaker. There's always some reason you don't want to trust the person who says you need to sleep more. Mm-hmm. But the CDC... Have you heard of them? Center for Disease Control. That's right. They have issued um, some proclamations. I don't know. Citing research, they are saying that our sleep is it's like it's recognized as important to public health, and that in sleep insufficiency has been linked to motor vehicle crashes, industrial disasters, medical and occupational errors. Mm-hmm. In fact, sleep deprivation is becoming an epidemic. Not like oh not like sugar and obesity, but it's getting up there. So the CDC has some recommendations for you Don't and me, Dave. Don't tell me that they're going to figure out a way to tax my sleeping somehow. Like if I wake up early, I'm going to get an extra tax or something. Well, you, I know I don't I mean I shouldn't even said that. Cuz I know they're <laughs> going to be like, "Ooh, we should start a we should research this." You, you and I, Dave, um, we are as creative people, we want to be at our best. So when we do sit down to record, we just nail it and not just screw around on uh, Pinterest all day. Yes. You use Pinterest, right? No. That's not your favorite site? No. <laughs> I've never even really been on Pinterest. I'm sorry I ever told I like my Twitter. wife about Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So CDC, these these are your very important, you might want to write these down, I'm words gonna, to live by. I'm going to tattoo them on me myself. They say... Hold on. I'm getting my needle thingy. Hold on. Okay. okay go, go to bed at the same time each night. Mm-hmm. Wake up at the same time each morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not going to happen. If you have children, you have no control yeah, yeah. over that. But Avoid large meals before bedtime. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, that's not going to happen either. <laughs> 11, 12 o'clock at night, I'm hungry every night. Uh, avoid caffeine and alcohol close to bedtime. Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that's the beer. No, you can't go to bed for a while. And here, that's the old-fashioned. Mm-hmm. Darn. Mm-hmm. And, oh, this one's easy. Avoid nicotine. Right. So with those four things, there's a big article about this. CDC.gov slash features slash... Did they see how many freaking hours you need, or does it vary from person to person? Person to person, you need between six and a half and eight and a half hours of sleep. Okay. So you should find your own sweet spot on that. I think if I get about... If I get a little more than seven, I'm pretty good. If I wake up on my own, Mm -hmm. I have found. But I think other people need more, and some people need a little less. As we get older, I think we need a little less. Right. Well, if you're 70, you probably only can sleep five or six hours, and that's all you need. Mm -hmm. If you're not 70, and you're sleeping, well, typically... So Hillary Clinton, being very old... Doesn't need to sleep at all. As much much sleep. She might be a vampire anyways. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, I've always had the problem of going to bed between 12.30 and 1 and waking up at 6. Night after mm. night after night after night after week after I'm month kind of similar. after year. I fall asleep about the same time, but other people wake me up around 6. And mm-hmm. that pisses me off. Right. I would prefer to go till 8 or 9 right. if I go to sleep at 12.30. If you go to bed at 1, you should wake up at between 8 and 9, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that's reasonable. So I've sort of – this is one of the things I've known like – cutting back on soda, maybe exercising more. Yeah. So I've been trying to 
you know, maybe at least start thinking about going to bed at 1130. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe I don't start one more TV show at 1130 at night. God, it's hard because I've never liked to go to bed since I was a kid. I never did. I, I used to watch the, you know, I'd sneak in down the hallway and my mm-hmm. parents would be watching The Tonight Show. This is back in the 70s. And I would like be watching from the, you know, from, from the, the hallway. hallway. Yeah, I was like with my jammies watching. <laughs> I, was, I would see Pete Barbeauty playing the piano with his big cigar. And then, you know, Jack Carter would be doing uh, jokes. You know who Jack Carter is? You probably have no idea. Jack. He's like one of those old, like, I don't know, Jewish comedians, you know, from, he probably, yeah, you know, he's works at the Catskills and I, probably I, did vaudeville. I know? watched a little bit of uh, the t- Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got to play some Tonight Show big band charts. Oh. That was cool. I used to go see the Tonight Show taped a lot. I used to go to Burbank uh, back in the late 80s. Oh, I, I played it in a, a band. Uh, the drummer of the band that I played for was the music librarian for The Tonight Show. Oh. So we would pull up parts and it would say, you know, Doc Solo's here. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> notes on it. Yeah. yeah. That was a, that was, those were fun times. I remember I saw Jerry Seinfeld on that show one time back, back when he was first breaking. That was fun. Yeah, so. That was fun. Fun times. When, when we're only getting five hours of sleep, no matter what the military says, it's just not enough to function. So I never liked going to bed early. I always wanted to stay up and maximize my day. But the exhaustion of not getting a little bit of sleep is starting to outweigh the mm-hmm. wanting to stay up past mm-hmm. midnight. Just a little bit. I was like, oh, I'm tired again. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, I went to bed at one. Mm-hmm. And so, I take a long time to fall asleep too. Yeah, so I wanted to share that with everybody. Did you get a chance to do all your sharing? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm next week, now. next week I'd like to tell you about the workshop that I attended. I did a three day on course instructor training workshop, mm-hmm. which is, I'll tell you more about it next week, but just to sort of get a taste for the listeners, on course workshop is methodology structures and strategies for teaching effectively for students completely based on research. Mm -hmm. Even though some people treat it like a religious experience, they talk about it like it's a, you know, something to get behind. Oh, you got to get on course. It's completely research based. So based on research, like, uh, like global warming research and stuff like that. No, not, (laughs) not faulty computer models that have never once proved to be right and cost billions of dollars to the interest groups that made it. It's actually (laughs) research that has proven to be effective. And then they extrapolate what worked from that. And they teach us how to make the working strategies happen in the classroom. Well, for God's sake, it's about time. That's right. And people have been doing it that it's going around. Good. It's going around. I wish I could go back to be as, being a student again. I'd be no, such you don't. a better student than I was no, when you I wouldn't. was first trying to do it. It is so worse for students right now. I would be fine. What do you mean? What, what's, what's worse about it? Maybe you'd be okay if you had the right professors that treated you like an adult. But for the most part, from what well, I I'd hear... I'd be older than 90% of them. So it would be a matter of, will I treat them as adults? Probably. No, maybe you'd be older than 20% of the professors. Okay. Like if you were in my class, you... Right, you'd be the older guy. Yeah, there's always a, like a couple guys that are older than me, but mm-hmm. most of those pe- professors that I work with. So what I hear from other professors is that students just act like children. They've yeah. been treated like children their whole life, mm-hmm. and they continue to act like children in school. So what happens is the professors have to change the way they behave. So instead of treating you like an adult, I need you to read this and come back with your questions next week so we can talk out. about Do it. They use timeouts in the classroom. Well, they, they use... Stru- Ricky, if you... I, you're, I'm, I'm going to count to three. If you don't put that iPhone down. They use strategies to One. to get you to cooperate. Uh-huh. Like taking the phone. Okay, you have five seconds to pick your phones up, check for messages. Okay, put them down. <laughs> if you pick your phone up, you lose 10 points. I like this. I like hearing all these millennials are... Uh... They they <laughs> do that kind of thing. Like that's an example that somebody gave. Mm. They have we have phone breaks. <laughs> I was like, good God, people. I like this. I listen to the other instructors and I think I would rather stab myself in the face with a pencil than sit through some of those classes. So when so probably with the first day when your class comes in, you're like I don't want any cell phones in this class. Turn them off and put them away. And everyone's thinking, okay, grandpa. <laughs> You know, they're like, you're like the, the Luddite who, uh, you know, still has the IBM uh, 286 at home and he, he gets the to get on. and That'd be nice. Yeah. File his taxes by himself because he's a militia guy. 
I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about right now. And, I think I've had too much of this uh, old fashioned is what happened. That old fashioned is pretty good. It's really good. <laughs> so for you old fashioned drinkers out there, I use a little bit of gum syrup, which gives it some viscosity. Yes, when Sable chews gum, he gets it gets really viscous. Syrupy. And he, he spits a big, like sort of a whole mouthful of spit into your drink, and it's <sighs> damn good. Mm-hmm. Is it juicy fruit? The yellow pack, right? Yeah, the, the double double your refreshment. Yeah, that is good. The mix with Sable's saliva mm-hmm. is like tasty. That's what activates the chemicals. Mm-hmm. No, there's a lot of great things going on in college right now. You would probably be great, and just avoid the. I would think it's it, like. is it so is is it a lot easier to get laid now if you're a college d- guy student is it except I'm guys so jealous are of that. guys are not allowed to talk to women they're taught that speaking to women is bad you know they not... have that app where they can say hey I'd like to have sex with you and then they fill out the the form and they get their consent Which, is that we're still working on that Dave no we're still working on that app that has not not a thing yet <laughs> I just got a text message from my wife during the podcast don't forget soccer practice tomorrow. <laughs> I get such a, I get such a like I, I'm like James Bond, you know. I got I got a, my, I got I got the life boy. That's a good life. <laughs> I was at soccer practice yesterday. You were, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, making friends with the soccer parents. Yep, that's yeah. right. That's life when you have kids, folks. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like that, maybe not have kids. Oh, have kids anyway. All I'll right, call them that. have kids anyways. Yes. Have kids as young as you can, by the way, too. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. Yes. It's, because I'm tired of hearing people talk about how how tired they are. I'm so tired. I was talking to my child for 40 minutes, and I'm so tired now. <laughs> like, dude, just get over it. You know, that was a private conversation we had, and I don't appreciate you telling everybody <laughs> what I was talking about. Let's wrap yeah. it up, Dave. Let's well, wrap okay, it up. but yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Have them, have them when you're young. You know, for two reasons. It hurts to when you're 40. It hurts to pick them up. Like seriously, physically, it would hurt to pick them up. But second you're of all, you're not the only guy. Second I've heard of say all, that. you adore them so much, you just want to have more time on the planet with them. That's mm. my thing. It's like oh. I, I was 42 when my first daughter was like, I wish I was 30. I'd have 10 more years on the planet with them. So there you go. Well, you probably will, but we'll save that for another episode. Yeah. So we'd like to thank you for subscribing to the show. You can find the Indispensable Thursday show on iTunes and everywhere that fine podcasts are served. We want to hear your voice. Dave, what's the hotline? Huh? Uh, the hotline phone number six five seven two zero six zero seven seven seven. As they say in the radio biz, zero triple seven. So six five seven two oh six zero triple seven. I'm not sure they say that, Dave. Thank we appreciate you. your iTunes store reviews. So far, all five stars. I'm expecting a four star from one of you guys. I'm counting don't, on you for that. Don't encourage them to, for a four star. We can't be a mediocre podcast and only have five stars. People will be suspicious if we only have five star podcasts. Leave us a message on Facebook at facebook.com slash the indispensable Thursday show or follow us on Twitter at Sable and Dave. Yes, follow us, but don't don't get too close. And, and if it's at night, I don't want don't get too close to me because I'm gonna get a little like I'm gonna get a little weirded out. Don't get behind think, Dave after Taco not, Night. No. No, that's for, for sure. <laughs> Badoom, see you, Dave. <laughs>